What's good YouTube? Today's video is going to be a balanced druid guide for 10.1. We're going to cover everything for the balanced druid from talents to tier sets, rotation, stat priority and consumables and also any macros you might want to use. At the end of the video I'll also be going over my overall thoughts on this spec for 10.1 so stay tuned for that. So if this video does help you out then please feel free to drop a like down below and also subscribe to your boy but let's crack on with the guide. Balanced druid has recently had a massive overhaul on their talents to make choices more meaningful and viable. That being said the builds don't really change that much from a raid build to a mythic plus build minus a few talents because of the pathing you have to take. You end up taking talents to buff your single target as well as your AoE. In the class tree we're going to take improved bark skin and also verdant heart to improve our tankiness, making bark skin and frenzied regeneration much more impactful. We'll put a point into wild charge for some extra mobility especially while in moonkin form as this becomes a disengage and then after this we're going to take our utility talents in soothe, typhoon for a knockback, ursul's vortex that can be swapped out with mass entanglement, innovate as a very powerful raid cooldown as well as nature's vigil for some passive healing you'll mainly want to pair with your cooldown windows to get maximum value. Down the middle we'll take Stampeding Raw and reduce this cooldown by one minute with improved Stampeding Raw. Across from here you're going to take a 30% instant heal from Renewal on a 1.5 minute cooldown and finally on the left side of the tree we'll take Incap Raw for an AoE stop and then also bang two points in Well Honed Instincts for even more survivability triggering a frenzied regen every 90 seconds when you fall below 40% health. I do just want to make note that in Mythic Plus on weeks like Afflicted, you could always talent in to remove corruption to help out your healers. And to take remove corruption, I just removed a point from this talent node here, as well as dropping one point in Well Honed Instincts to still get that full value of the heal, but now it's every 120 seconds. Onto the balanced talent tree then, down the left side, we're going to take the new Wild Surges talent. This is going to increase our crit chance on our builders by 15%, and this plays really nice nicely into the next node we take in Astral Smolder. Whenever we crit with Wrath or Starfire, the target will take an additional 80% damage over the next 8 seconds. This again plays into another talent called Waning Twilight, which is a debuff we want to keep active as much as possible on mobs so that we deal 8% extra damage to them at all times. Our only way to proc this with this build is to have our Moonfire and Sunfires rolling, and then Critical Strike with our builders to apply Astral Smolder. And this is then also helped by the point we put in Balance of All Things, further down the tree, giving us 16% decaying crit whenever we enter an Eclipse. In the middle we'll take our main cooldown in Celestial Alignment and then further our uptime with Primordial Arcanic Pulsar granting us Celestial Alignment after we spend 600 Astral Power. On the right side we're going to take Power of Goldrin for some extra passive single target but this allows us to actually take Rattle the Stars which buffs our spenders massively, reducing the cost and increasing the damage of Star Surge and Star Fall. Star Lord is a haste maintenance buff that we want to upkeep at max stacks for as much of the fight as we can and after this we'll come down and take Fury of a Loon and buff this ability further with Radiant Moonlight, generating us massive astral power and dealing some substantial damage. Down the middle we're going to turn our Celestial Alignment into Incarnation, increasing the duration and giving us 10% extra crit, and finally down the left we'll build down to Denizen of the Dream, spawning a little fairy dragon that increases our arcane and nature damage by 10% with Friend of the Fae. So this is the general build for Moonkins across most content. If the fight is pure single target then you can opt out of Starfall and Ethereal Kindling to pick up Warrior of a Loon and also Nature nature's balance for some extra single target throughput. Warrior of a Loon is going to allow you to get into those eclipses much much quicker and then nature's balance is just going to generate you some passive astral power during the encounter. The only other change you can make in Mythic Plus content is taking Star Weaver instead of Rattle the Stars for some extra priority damage. You could also take Umbral Embrace and Sundered Firmament instead of Denizen but this build isn't really recommended unless it's a raid encounter with sustained AoE damage. For balance our tier set is completely passive where we don't have to change any of our talents or gameplay to account for the new bonus. The two set is going to increase our Sunfire's radius by 3 yards, a nice little quality of life change, and also increase the damage of our Moonfire, Sunfire and Shooting Stars by 20%. Our four set gives our Shooting Stars a 20% chance to proc a Crashing Star, dealing Astral damage and also generating 5 more Astral power, and overall this bonus is around a 10% damage gain that does benefit slightly more on AoE encounters. Balanced Druid gameplay is a standard build and spend class with a predictable cadence to your rotation. The core of the gameplay is deciding which Eclipse you're going to enter by casting two of the opposite spells, Wrath or Starfire. Currently, on two or less targets, you're going to want to enter Solar Eclipse by casting two Starfires, and on three or more targets, you're going to enter your Lunar Eclipse by casting two Wraths. Eclipse uptime is incredibly important, and you should aim to be inside Eclipse as often as you can. From there on, you build Astral Power using the appropriate filler, while maintaining your dots on all targets to activate your Mastery bonus. And on single target, you'll dump your Astral Power with Star Surge, and then use Star 
powerful on AoE encounters. Moonkin's opener is nice because it doesn't really change too much from AoE to single target at the moment, so let's go over the opening rotation. Note that this can also be used as a cooldown priority list. You're going to start by pre-casting two rafts at two seconds on the pool timer. This caters more towards a raid scenario. You'll then apply or maintain your Moonfire and Sunfire and reapply these dots when they have 30% remaining on their duration. After this, we're going to use Incarnation. Here you'll want to use a Star Surge on single target or Star Fall on AoE and do not overcap your Astral Power. Next, we're going to cast Wrath on up to three targets or Starfire if there's four or more targets. Following this, we're going to use Fury of a Loon. And finally, we're going to dump our Astral Power towards the end of our cooldowns. After this opener, you'll want to follow this priority system for single target. You'll want to dot your targets with Moonfire and Sunfire with 100% uptime. This is imperative due to our mastery. After this, we're going to use two Starfires to stay in Eclipse as often as possible. Remember, we're always prioritizing Solar Eclipse on single target. We want to avoid capping Astral Power by spending on Star Surge. Then we're going to use our minor cooldowns like Fury of a Loon. And finally, we'll press Wrath to build our Astral Power. And for AoE encounters, you'll follow this rotation and priority. You're going to dot all targets with Moonfire and Sunfire and again, keep 100% uptime. This is always your first global priority. You'll want to prioritize Lunar Eclipse on AoE, unless of course there are multiple targets but you can only cleave two of them. Here you would enter a Solar Eclipse to generate more Astral Power. If you are going to use cooldowns on AoE, here's where you'll activate Incarnation after you have everything dotted. Then you're going to Starfall until you are at zero Astral Power. We'll use Fury of a Loon as often as possible, but do try to sync it up with your Pulsar windows. And finally, we're going to spam Starfire on three plus targets, unless we are in our cooldown window and then it will be four or more targets, otherwise we'll use Wrath. Moving on to the stat weights for the balanced druid as always if you're ever confused if a piece of gear is an upgrade i would always recommend you to sim your character first that being said as far as balanced druid goes you basically want mastery and a little dash of everything else single target stat weights are very similar to multi-target Anything with mastery on it is an added bonus, but don't sacrifice too much item level to get mastery as intellect is king. Haste is going to be our second best secondary stat, followed closely by crit and versatility. Here we have a list of recommended enchants we're going to use on our balanced druid. For the weapon, we're going to use sophic devotion. Cloak, we're going to use graceful avoidance. On the chest, we're going to use waking stats. Braces, devotion of avoidance. Legs, we'll go with a frozen spell thread. Boots, we're going to enchant with the watcher's loam. And finally, on our rings, generally, we're going to go with a devotion of mastery. Story. Overall, the best file for the Balanced Druid is the file of Elemental Chaos. However, many players are running the file of Tepid Versatility as it is very close in damage and also provides damage reduction. Elemental Potion of Ultimate Power is your DPS potion of choice, with Refreshing Healing Potion being your best healing potion. Balanced Druid will always use Howling Rune for the weapon haste buff, and ideally you'd want to consume a Feast for the intellect buff, but Sizzling Seafood Medley are a good backup as some personal food. You want to use Keen Neltherite in your gem slots, and for your Primalist gem, you'll likely use a Skillful and Limited Diamond. To quickly go over some macros, I'll leave a paste bin in the description of this video for all of mine. I don't generally use too many, most of them are going to be mouse over macros, for example this rebirth mouse over macro here. I've got an incarnation macro that also ties my berserking cooldown into it and uses a trinket if I have an on use. Again, another mouse over innovate macro. And finally, I use some app focus macros for any crowd control abilities I have so that I don't have to target swap and can pump damage into the priority target. I think the balanced druid has once again surprised a lot of people with their strength coming into this second season. They have great burst single target damage with even greater target swapping potential if you're able to pull your astral power. On top of this, they have some of the best sustained AoE in the game with their hard hitting dots and permanent uptime on Starfall. Also, being a druid, they are an incredibly tanky spec too, with short defensive cooldowns like Bark Skin and also Bear Form for any scary situations. That's not all though, they also bring some of the best utility in the game, which is argument enough to bring them to any kind of content through their party buff in Mark of the Wild, Innovate for healers in raids, and multiple AoE stops, which are perfect for Mythic. Plus. The only thing Moonkins do struggle with is burst AoE as they do require some ramp to get their dots and AP rolling but after that is GG. But that's all you need to know for the Balanced Druid and that wraps up this guide. If this guide did help you out then please feel free to drop a like down below and subscribe to your boy and until next time I'll catch you guys later.